everything. All right, guys, we are back in Solo Learn doing JavaScript. We're on functions. Let's go ahead and move forward. User defined functions. A function is basically a block that outputs code that can be reused over and over again. Uh, defining a function. To define a JavaScript function, use the function keyword. So when you want to uh, define a function, you have to let the computer know it's a function. You also have to name the scope using brackets. Like what is, where is this function in running code? Where does the code start? Where does the code end? Now to fill in the blanks to find a function called hello. So again, you need to define the function and you have to spell function correctly. And then uh, if you want to call the function, cause it's not gonna run automatically, you have to, you have to go ahead and call it like so. So that your function can actually do what it's intended for, right? Uh, how many times can a function be executed in web times? As many as needed which will lead to infinite loops with an answer like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so just be careful with that, guys. Um, we've all done infinite loops. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It actually is like a little bit of uh, pride once you write your first infinite loop. Hey, man, I'm learning. That's what it is. Anyhow, what to do when you create a parameter? Uh, so uh, you can pass things into functions that will then use that. That's called parameter. Um, Use the var keyword, use the write a variable name in the parentheses. There you go. Now, using parameters, it's going to move forward. You'll see when and how is parameter used. By calling a function and placing a value in parentheses, by placing the value before the function name, by placing the value before the function call. I think that's what they mean. It's kind of a weird question right there. All right, uh, fill in the blanks to declare function. Nice drag and drop. So you're gonna start with the function, the name of the function, any parameters you're gonna pass in. And then, uh, so we have our function, uh, my alert. So here's my alert. And then we have this. And then in here we have, oh, look at them, man. They're getting fancy. So uh, it's getting a little more complicated, right? So let's go ahead and take this out. I thought we had to use all. There you go. So you have to put the value in there like that. And it's a string because we use um, uh, quotations using multiple parameters. So you can take more than one parameter in here. What character is used to separate parameters? It's a comma. What is the output of this code? So we have a function that takes in two parameters. We say x is five right here and y is eight. So if x is greater, else write y. So our code is eight. Fill in the blanks to create a function on learning the sum of two parameters. So it's gonna be a function, my function, and we are going to just put a comma and then, oh, what does it wanna do? The sum, excuse me. So uh, you're gonna add the plus and the y. So you can add your arguments together. Like so. How many times can a declared function be used? Any. Nice. So the return statement. So sometimes you may just want to return the value with the function and be used in another function or somehow used elsewhere. Now, uh, when you need to input data, when you need to make the calculation and receive the result is when you will use the return function or the return app return in a function. Uh, when is return statement placed? Outside, at the end of the function description, typically. Now, function return, add numbers. So please enter the corresponding keyword to have the result of the function below displayed on the screen. So, uh, let's see here. We want to return the result. Hence return, because Results are already factored here. It's the first parameter minus the second, and then we want to return that result so that we can do something with it, right? There's also alert, which is basically a pop-up. Something that's kind of annoying, so <laughs> uh, I don't know that you'll actually be using this for that. How many parameters can be accepted by the alert function? Oh, I don't actually know this. I gotta go back. 
Uh, I guess just one, because it's just text, right? So I believe it's just one. And then the prompt box, you can actually enter code. Although, again, this is kind of weird that you would do this. This is kind of outdated stuff, but you could. Uh, so if our name is equal to a prompt, and then uh, you want to set the alert to the name. So basically, uh, you're going to set, enter your name, and then you're going to call the alert to the name. And then finally, there's a confirm box, which is the cancel or OK box that everyone gets when they get spam, right? And so uh, this would be nice if this was gone, uh, but there's a confirm box. OK returns true, cancel returns false. And let's go on to the quiz. The following code will result in what value? We have a function that takes in a parameter number. So test two. So we're going to alert the value of two. So two, well, number is less than five, plus, plus. So that's going to be two, three, four. Okay, it wouldn't be five because it doesn't. What's your ability doing wrong? Four. Oh, excuse me. It's going to be five because it runs on four, then it adds, then it returns. Sorry, guys. Um, what is the output of the following expression? Multiply numbers. So var c is two times, or a times b. A is 2, uh, B is 6, so that's going to be 12. Actually, nothing. Oh. Nothing, because it never actually gets returned. Hence uh, why it's nothing. So please fill in the corresponding names for the built-in dialog boxes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, getting input from the user that is the prompt and uh, alert so alert is for displaying a message prompt is from for getting input from the user fill in the blanks to calculate the maximum of the parameters so we're saying if a is greater than or equal to b return a else return b and then finally, what is the correct? All right, one more. What is the correct syntax for referring to an external script called script.js? So you have the script, and then you have the source of the script. And what will alert on the display screen? So we have uh, a fifteen and b five. So uh, it's fifteen is greater than five, so this is going to fail. So our else is going to be three because it's going to fifteen divided by five, which will return three. So we're making good progress. Just three things left. We're going to be covering objects, core objects, and then the DOM and events. Uh, I think I'll actually pick something up in DOM and events uh, just because sometimes you miss some things that you normally wouldn't just by that you don't normally use. So I'm looking forward to that. But as always, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And make sure to check out our weekly interview series, Behind the Code, where we interview a developer, a designer, or somebody in the tech space and kind of shoot the shit for about 30, 45 minutes about their profession, what they do, and any advice they have. Lots of great questions. We always take questions at the end of subscribers when we do them live as well. So check that out. Uh, appreciate you all, guys. Don't forget to support me on patreon.com slash codingtutorials360. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. If you're interested in a coding boot camp, why don't you check them out where they include housing alongside their tuition so you can get up, go, and immerse yourself in the environment. If you want to support me, go over to patreon.com slash codingtutorials360 so we can put out more content. Thanks for watching.